Welcome back, Fungi Files. Today, we're going to be making oats. I switched a few months ago from brown rice to oats, so I can try and keep the human food for humans and use animal feed for my mushrooms instead. The only downside to the oats is that they take a little bit longer to colonize because of those full outer hulls. Today, I'm going to show you a quick no-soak, no-simmer, small batch recipe that I use just to do a few grain jars in my Instant Pot. Let's get right into it. So I've been using a big bag of whole oats. I do 100 to 80 ratio. So for every 100 grams of oats, I'll do 80 grams of water. I don't let them soak or anything. We'll just throw them in here, get them into the pressure cooker. And the important part is the hot shake afterwards. Generally, that's why people stay away from this no soak, no simmer method is because that hot shake is super important afterwards to distribute the moisture and make sure all of the grains are evenly hydrated. Anyway, let's go ahead and get these jars filled up so we can get them into the pressure cooker. We will just tear our scale with the empty jar on, get 100 grams of oats. For these 300, 400 milliliter jars, I do 100 grams of oats and it fills it up pretty well. I also don't break and shake and another downside of the oats is that they take a lot longer to colonize. They have that full outside hull, which means the mycelium needs to break through that and digest it, which also means that, that sterilization is super important. But these oats are a little bit more forgiving in the pressure cooker as well and don't burst as easily. There's 100 grams of oats in here, which for me is just over the 100 uh, milliliter mark in these jars. And I need to fill up the secondary jar. I would generally suggest if you're doing large scale cultivation or trying to get a bunch of jars done at once, it makes more sense to just boil and overnight soak or use some other method. For me though, these jars take a long time to colonize, so that allows me to run them just a few at a time. I can fit six in my Instant Pot and they work uh, very well. And we don't need the scale for the water. It's just gonna be 80 milliliters of water. And I have this convenient little flask. 80, 80 and 80. Now with these two jars, I just give them a little swish. That water should pretty much get to the top level. It's just a little bit under. We'll throw on a modifying lid onto both of them. Get them both wrapped up in aluminum foil and then get those off into the pressure cooker. Now we're gonna send those grain jars off into the pressure cooker. I use an Instant Pot, which is about 12 and a half PSI at its peak. So we have to make sure we put it in for about two hours. I usually do between an hour and 50 and two hours. You should be able to go for about three hours, and again, these grains, since they're whole oats, should be a little bit more forgiving, but since we are force hydrating these inside the pressure cooker, we want to be careful that we're not bursting those grains. And while the hot shake is important to distribute that moisture afterwards, you also have to be careful if there's any micro fractures that could have expanded and caused your glasses to crack. And also, you're just dealing with these straight out of the pressure cooker, so they're still going to be extremely hot, so that hot shake can be a little bit dangerous. It's just very important to take precautions and be a little bit careful. I always use an oven mitt and just give it a gentle shake. And remember, just because you're doing small batch cultivation, that doesn't mean you can't have a lot going on at once. I've got about 15 jars here that I need to spawn out to bulk and get those all to fruit. But it's convenient for me just to run about five at a time. I can inoculate those the next day and I can keep that repeating every other day if I need more. This just enables me to only have a few on hand at a time, but I always have some. And with these freshly sterilized, the important part is just to take them out, give them a quick hot shake, and they're good to set on the shelf and cool down overnight. Now let's get into the lab and show you how we can inoculate these grain jars using either agar or liquid culture. So we're going to make a liquid culture here to start. I'm going to pop open a new syringe. We're going to let that dry out for a minute. I just soaked all the uh, injection ports with isopropyl alcohol. We're going to do one of these grain jars with agar. We'll do this pink oyster. And we're going to do this other one with this uh, liquid culture. So just a really old pink uh, oyster culture I took a transfer of and did not want to waste. So I'm going to send this off to that grain. And then this liquid culture is just a nice piapino culture. Piapino culture is isolated from the beginning of this year. And this liquid culture was made in March. So we'll go ahead and withdraw just a, a full syringe worth of liquid culture beautiful I'm going to sterilize it and I'm going to return this culture jar back to storage now we have our really nice piapino culture here which I will go ahead and get labeled perfect so I've got my label 
for both the syringe and the culture jar since they're both using the same culture. This just tracks back to my isolation tracker, uh, which is just this really advanced spreadsheet that I've been working on that uh, kind of monitors the health uh, inventory, culture stock, uh, their viability and everything. Just make sure I keep everything uh, in order and organized. I'll set this on the other side so we can label this jar. Now with this properly cooled down, let's go ahead and just inject a few cc's. And inoculate that first jar. We can sterilize our liquid culture. And I'm going to cap this and get it into storage. Now our inoculated jar here can be moved off into incubation. Now for the second part, we're going to be doing agar to grain. So we are going to start with sterilizing our blade and let that cool down. We can go ahead and pop off the wrap from there. And I have a modified lid on here, but since we're doing agar to grain, we can go ahead and loosen our lid. We're not going to take it all the way off though. Let's checkerboard our agar real quick. gonna break the, I try not to scrape the bottom of these plates too bad. I autoclave and reuse all of my uh, petri dishes. They're PP5 dishes. I just don't like I don't like wasting all the unnecessary waste that is uh, or generally apparent in this uh, in this field. So we can pop our lid off. Definitely didn't need all that agar in there. But again, I'm just trying to use that plate up and not let it go to waste. Just give it a good shake. Now we can clean up our workspace, sterilize our tools, and I need to uh, get a label for this. And we have our agar to grain label printed now, and we'll get this off into incubation now. So now over these upcoming days, we will let our inoculated grain jars colonize. Eventually they will be full and colonized where we can spawn them to bulk and then grow some more mushrooms. That does conclude today's episode though. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you in the next one.